Welcome back to Pace Immigration, paceimmigration.com, joined by U.S. and Canadian immigration lawyer Michael O'Rourke. Michael, good to see you. Challenging times uh, overseas, of course, in Ukraine. And information, uh, people are looking for information. The people that are leaving Ukraine uh, by the thousands and are looking for help. And the U.S. government says that it may be able to help them. So let's go into what's going on over there in general, as well as specifically, if people are on the highway heading out of uh, Ukraine, Michael, what's your advice for them, if any? Sure. Uh, so in general, all of the countries to Ukraine's west are taking refugees, uh, Moldova, Poland, especially, and Hungary. Um, but um, uh, And the different countries have different regimes. Uh, for instance, Poland is allowing Ukrainians to come even without a passport to cross the frontier. Uh, other countries further on in Europe, uh, such as Netherlands, and uh, Belgium are also providing uh, temporary protection for Ukrainians. Uh, the UK has also announced uh, a, an expansion of who it will allow to come across its borders and uh, settle in the UK for a temporary period. Um, people might also be able to come as refugees, uh, but in general, refugee law applies to people who have a specific fear of persecution and does not apply to people who have a generalized um, state of war in their homeland. Right. Let's take a look at some specifics for people. We've got here U.S. expediting B-1, B-2 visas. This uh, information has come out from the U.S. government. I've got it here from an email that the U.S. Embassy in Warsaw and the consulate in Krakow are expediting B-1 and B-2 visas, what we would commonly refer to as visitor visas, uh, but there's certain specifics that apply. Yes. Uh, so uh, the American citizens section of the U.S. Embassy in Warsaw has been uh, really at the forefront of trying to expedite visa processing for Ukrainians, and uh, they've uh, lumped people into two categories. So if you are a spouse or child of a U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident, there are certain procedures in place for you to either expedite an existing appointment in Warsaw, transfer a visa appointment from probably Ukraine, but could be anywhere to Warsaw, uh, or begin a process to start a visa appointment in Warsaw. Um, everything is centered on the U.S. Travel Docs website. That's the website that you use to schedule appointments. And different categories of appointment holders are instructed to do different things. So, for instance, and, and I've got my notes here because it is complex. Sure, yeah. It's the government. It has to be complex. Um, so, uh, if you are already in possession of an appointment setting in Warsaw, and you are in this spouse and child category, uh, then you can go in and request to expedite your appointment, and you have to do so if you're uh, scheduled in Warsaw using a C or slash D1 visa category. So uh, that's usually for crew members, but the embassy has set aside this category specifically for people fleeing Ukraine to be able to better sort through their applications and prioritize them. Okay, Michael, let's just back up just one second because, sure. and you're right, you've got to consult those notes because the email that we were sent is just full of links and letters and numbers and, you know, uh, immigration speak, if, yes. if you will. Uh, so let's start with how do you make an appointment? Because that was one thing in the email that went out. Are we talking about people that were already had an appointment in place before the conflict broke out or people that have tried to make an appoint appointment since? What What is the appointment versus the no appointment? Sure. So in general, to make a U.S. visa appointment, you have to do two things. You have to fill out a DS-160 form online at the State Department's CEAC website, ceac.state.gov, uh, and set up a non-immigrant visa um, uh, application. That's, that's your first step for literally anything. And then 
If you have set that up, you get a DS-160 confirmation number, and then you can go into usually a U.S. travel docs website. Uh, it has different names in different parts of the world, but for Europe, it's mostly U.S. travel docs. And uh, there you use your DS-160 confirmation number and set up an appointment at the embassy or consulate that you want to have your appointment at. Okay, so the person did all that. They had an appointment set in Ukraine. Then conflict broke out. Obviously, the consulate that is there is not going to be processing people. So what the U.S. government is saying is, hey, that appointment is still good or should be still good, but you can now do that in Warsaw. Exactly. So uh, they want you to email support-poland at ustraveldocs.com in order to request the transfer of your appointment from U.S. Uh, embassy in Kiev to either the embassy in Warsaw or the consulate in Krakow. Um, you generally, in non-emergent times, uh, have to stay at the embassy where you have paid your fees and designated your DS-160 to go to. Uh, so uh, this is a bit of an extraordinary measure. Okay, so we have those people. Now, what about the people who didn't have an appointment? So they're, they're leaving Ukraine for obvious reasons. Uh, they've gotten into Poland, and now they're like, you know what, I do fit under, and let me just rewind if you're watching on the YouTube channel, we've got uh, expediting visas for Ukrainian spouses or children of U.S. citizens and permanent residents. Let's say you fall in that category, but you never made an appointment. So how do you go about it now? Sure. So if you've never made an appointment, they suggest either setting up a new appointment as an individual uh, or setting up a group appointment and going through the normal appointment processing uh, or appointment setting process on U.S. travel docs. Okay, so to, so in other words, and I hate to put it this way, but pretend there is no conflict then, and basically you're just starting over in Poland. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So you can either, uh, you either have a pre-existing appointment in Poland, you have a pre-existing appointment in Ukraine, or you have never set up a visa appointment. Um, so starting at U.S. Travel Docs is usually the best way to go um, uh, once you've filed a DS-160. Um, I would also, since this is a very fast changing situation, I would also subscribe to the American Citizen Services section of the uh, U.S. Embassy in Poland's Twitter feed because they are constantly putting out updates and instructions for people in order to take advantage of U.S. immigration the system in order to leave Ukraine. Have you heard anything about other countries? I mean, if people uh, left Ukraine and they didn't go to Poland, they went to, say, Hungary. Are they like, oh, no, I should have gone to Poland? Or is something happening in Hungary as well? Do you know? I do believe that there are things happening in Hungary. Um, uh, mostly the U.S. missions are focusing their efforts on Poland, but I'm, I'm sure that there is a similar system set up in Hungary, although I don't know the details of it. Um, and, and this is really, we're just speaking to U.S. immigration uh, at this moment. Uh, when you apply for temporary protection as, you, as you're leaving your country uh, and going to another country, there are different procedures that are set up by the home governments, of course, uh, that you're coming into to uh, settle you, to provide protection to provide potential work permits, things like that. Those are all dependent on those countries' national laws. So uh, we're really just focused on how you can get a U.S. visa if you are either a spouse or child of a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, or if you have business contacts. That's the second group. Business contacts, less close relatives, uh, and uh, potential friends. There are are different ways that they are approaching that group of people too. I was going to say, what about people that might have been in process for something like an E2? Uh, well, I think even though the this is more focused on B1 and B2, I think if you have an E2 appointment somewhere and you are now finding yourself in Poland, also reach out to support dash Poland at US Travel Docs. Uh, I think that is going to be the clearinghouse of where people who need visas will come and and hopefully be able to take appointments in Poland.
Yeah, and I was going to say, and they can also contact you at mrourke at pacelawfirm.com if they have some questions, because I know you always like to help people out and of field course. some questions. Um, what else you got? Anything? Any other news coming out of Ukraine in terms of U.S. immigration that you're hearing about? I know that I saw, I hate to throw you another curveball, but I, I actually I don't hate to do it. I love no, it. I, love it. Um, <laughs> I was looking at uh, TPS, Temporary Protective. What What is TPS again? Because I saw things are coming out of Congress that they're thinking of getting that into play. Sure. And this is what I would expect next in terms of, of U.S. policy. TPS is called, it's temporary protected status. It has been proposed by a group of senators, but it has not yet become a policy. Uh, TPS is a designation by the administration, uh, by the executive branch, that certain groups of people based on nationality are in need of temporary protection in the United States. So, yeah. for instance, oh, sorry, uh, go sorry. ahead, Michael. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, uh, TPS was granted uh, last to Syrians uh, in the United States uh, when the Syri Syrian civil war was at its height. Um, uh, Hondurans, uh, El Salvadorians, uh, as conflict moves across the globe, uh, the U.S. government usually responds by offering temporary protected status. And it more or less says that you can stay in the United States uh, for an indefinite time and you have the ability to get uh, work authorization. Yeah, I remember uh, Haiti as well, wasn't there, I believe because of an earthquake or something, or, and even natural disasters, in other words, can also uh, make TPS come into play. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Michael, thanks for this. People can contact you at morourke at pacelawfirm.com. Uh, any questions or anything you'd like to see in particular emails that could help you out right off the bat? It's always helpful if somebody can explain their situation and give an idea of what their connections to the U.S. are. Do they have, uh, US, uh, sorry, uh, to the U.S.A.? Um, uh, are they a spouse or a child? Do they have parents? Do they have a brother or sister? What is your connection? Because that then helps us think about all of the different programs that are out there where we can uh, hopefully be creative. Excellent. Michael O'Rourke, morourke at pacelawfirm.com on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. I know Michael will be talking again soon to update things. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Sounds great, Sean. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.